Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It's that time again, and we're back in the hot seat. Welcome to The Advocate, where we roll up our sleeves and take on the topical issues for a better society. I'm saying, PC or not, we're getting too woke for our own good. Aisha Mohammed Oyebodi makes another appearance. She drives home the case against criminal impunity and rule of law with a personal tale of her own. Emeka reminds us of what is important and, like it or not, politics makes the checklist. Bolahar treats us to a theater of absurdities, but warns that we should sober up and remain watchful. Laboris wants to identify with the hush youths as we mark International Youth Week. He says, one way or the other, we harvest what we sow. Well, make no mistake, we are change agents set to sow seeds of productive thinking for a better society after the break. Cultures are surely meant to be inclusive. When they operate to the contrary, they would be functioning in a mode that is antisocial or counterculture. Today I'm going to be talking about too woke for our own good. I, as did many others, came across the video of a young boy and his mother, which has since gone viral. In the video, the mother was threatening to smack her son for continuously taking things that didn't belong to him. The boy, who clearly is very smart and knows how to negotiate his way out of a tight situation, proceeded to do just that, whilst begging for mercy. And the outcome was a funny exchange between mother and son. As a mom, I have had such exchanges with my son and so could instantly relate. But hold up, not too fast, said the woke police. This is child abuse, they screamed. This is a case for child services, the so-called self-righteous lot tried to push down our throats. They even went as far as saying that those of us who saw nothing wrong needed our heads checked. That some of us have been too abused as kids that we now see this kind of treatment as normal. Wow, just wow. It turns out the boy was not beaten in the end and instead of being abused as they quickly asserted, is from a loving home and is quite happy, well-adjusted little chap. Wokeness as described by the Urban Dictionary is self-righteousness masquerading as enlightenment. And this is the very problem I have with wokeness always jumping to conclusions with very little to go on, acting as judge and jury. Wokeness doesn't take into account any nuances or mitigating circumstances. It passes swift, broad judgments that have the power to cause real damage to its target. From wokeness comes cancel culture, which basically means you can be canceled for things you said or did, regardless of how long ago it happened. You can lose your job for making comments that the woke mob deem unfit. This cancer that has been spreading throughout the West is trying to get a grip on us here in Africa. Our way brothers and sisters now think they should tell us how to speak, what to do, and how to think. Deviating from their woke rules can bring forth negative consequences, but we must resist. We must be able to have frank, open discussions without fear that the woke brigade will come for us. 
Such discussions will help us to get to know and understand one another better and will go a long way in helping to unite us, which is what the world needs so desperately now. Criticizing or canceling people who don't share the same view or behavior as us is childish and bully boy tactics. It is simply fascism and should never be encouraged. Yeah, uh, let me quickly start um, because um, um, fortunately, I. Your hands like this. <laughs> um, yeah, you, well, this kind of wokeness. Relax. <laughs> you see, you see, you see. This is wokeness is now. Wokeness? Because I, I, I have my hands yes, like this. He wants like me us. to be like him. Mm. <laughs> you know. But anyway, um, the boy's father he happens to be a friend, and and so um, what actually happened was um, I think it was the mom's um, sister in America. Who asked after him? I was like, "Why is he?" He said, "Ha, ah, you don't, you don't want to know the drama that this boy exhibits every time you tell him. You tell him don't do something, he will do it, and then he will start his drama. He's like, is he that grown now? Uh, he said, don't worry. When next it happened, I will send you a video. And so, oh my God, that was how the woman. Okay. So when he started all those drama, I was like, okay, this is a good one. So immediately he urged him on, and then sent the video to the sister. That was like. You can't believe it. <laughs> and so she laughed it off. I'm like, ah, no, I can't. I don't want to see this alone. And shared with her friend. Before you knew it, Whatever. the video was everywhere. Mm. And, mm. and so I listened to some lawyers shouting, mm. oh, child abuse. And I told the man, I said, look, if they come, call me. Abby. Call me. So let's begin to define what child abuse is. Really, and like you said, you know, this attitude of uh, this is how it is done in the mm. West. Whether right or wrong, we must copy even in America and the UK, those days, you know, until you have this um, issue of uh, prevalence of child abuse, they used to use even the cane to correct children. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you can even use, you know, um, why do they still do uh, naughty corners? Yeah. If then you don't need to correct no, child, why do they still do why, naughty why do you corners? Do you, you know, so, but really, if I completely agree with you. It's not, uh, we shouldn't copy hook, line, and sinker. Mm -hmm you know, what the West wants us to copy. We have our own way of raising up our children, even though we shouldn't, you know, do it too much. But mm. yet, really, um, and that's why you find that in some cases, even some people abroad, they send their children down. Say, ah, mom, please, this child will kill me in America and mm -hmm. UK. Take that child. I want to send him or her back home. For, and we have, we all so have, uh, quite a we all have a yeah. number of experience. I remember my friends quickly, my friend's uh, daughter, when they first brought her from UK. And then the grandmother spanked her. She was like, I'm going to the station to report. And then uh. she got there, she sat down by the cab because the policeman started laughing at her. Mm. But uh, she, she grew up to yeah. be a, a much I, better I think that, kid. Um, you know, I think this, we're, we're, we're getting to the, there's a conflict, I see, um, between, between, uh, or, um, the role of the state, because you know, there's a there's a there's a pushback against a nanny state where mm. the state, especially in the West, where the state knows how you should, how best to treat your your, your child. child. Yeah. Um, and then you also have this, like you said, this woke brigade mm. people saying, oh, even though I have no experience, no life experience, um, relative life experience, yeah. but I should know mm. how, how you should treat work. your own, how yeah. life should work. <clears throat> and, you know, it's. It's amazing. I don't think it's even a Western thing as such. I think it's just a, a mindset. Yes. Uh, maybe is. it started in the West. I think it but started it, in the yeah, West. But, but it, it is also a, a sub part of this age of individualism that we've entered with, you know, everybody sharing within their own world, having your, your mediating within your own world, mm. your own cell phone, your own project. You and then you want to project your to own live. world. Mm. We no longer have so much of a shared world, mm. but an individual world. But everybody's world wants, you, you want your own world to be. Everybody's world. Yeah, everybody's mm. world. And that, I see, is the it's a problem. Is a problem. Mm. Um, I, you know, I love that video. I, I wish I, I had that kind it. of engagement with my own kids as well. Because uh, sometimes I, I, I tell the story of my, my you know? I go to my daughter's bedroom and I knock on the door and she says, but dad, I, I yes. Mm -hmm. You know, she just gives me that, yes. What can I do what for you? you? I'm like, uh, <laughs> I just want us to talk. Like in the movie, it says, no, go. 
<laughs> you know, but it, 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 because you also learn these things, but you need to know. I, I love the fact that this, this mother could have that kind of dialogue mm. with, 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 with her son. I saw and, love. I, and I saw I, love, I, I and, I, love. And, I, and I really loved it. Okay. I, I saw love too. I mean, mm. that, that, that was the most interesting mm. part of, Calm the, down. of the video. Yeah. Calm down. And, and I saw down. negotiation. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody negotiate at one time or the other when you are in those circumstances. Yeah. And I'd taken up a couple of friends who were like, um, this is bad and all that. I said, did you do something like this? Mm. Yeah. Did you negotiate with your parent at a certain point in time when you were Yeah, you even given an opportunity yeah. to negotiate. <laughs> exactly. you know? okay. Or tell me that every time mommy mm. says, don't ever do this again, then you never did them mm. again. Is that how it worked for you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you find out that for a lot of them, that wasn't how it worked. So the question is, why are we trying to hold other people to standards? Or trying to be more... Or more... trying to be... More yeah. Catholic than it's, the Pope. Than the Pope. I, Aisha, I, um, you've been quiet. I, I, do you <laughs> want to jump in quickly and, and, and share oh, your... Oh, um, no, yeah. I was waiting to hear what yeah. everyone had to say. <laughs> I think, you know, for me, I mean, it's, I spent quite a bit of time mulling over the word woke, wokeness. You know, and there's this joke, I don't know if you had people say, is it a new drink? You know, is it a new <laughs> name for um, cool? It's such an interesting word. But the good, I mean, the important thing about it is about consciousness, you know, and I suppose really, in truth, one of the problems we're seeing with um, social media um, is that how far are we pushing what we think is our own consciousness mm -hmm. and our understanding of what you think is um, right or, or, or wrong. But the important thing is that perhaps we can make it a positive, um, if we can get people to focus on the social justice aspect of um, their concerns, you know, and then maybe some of it is to try and see how to deprogram, like um, she said, the issue around culture, you know, the social conditioning that we see as a result of our culture. But the issue of criticizing or canceling, I agree absolutely. And, you know, yeah, fascism, indeed. I, 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 and I think that, um, you know, it's, 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 um, it's a fine balance, and I hope we can find it. Thank you. So, um, I, you know, it's, it's great. I think that um, we live in the age where um, the, we're going to continue to have all of this conflict. Um, it's, but it's a beautiful time to be alive. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we advocate to keep the playing field as level as possible. Up next, Aisha seeks to level things up as regards another important issue after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. The advocates on Plus TV Africa. As Uta indicated, we are the voice of the voiceless. Quietly burying our dead, criminal impunity, and the rule of law, my story. So it was really interesting when Ekene asked me to join the advocates for this week, which I'm always excited to do. Um, immediately she mentioned the data. I said to her, I'd like to speak about criminal impunity and the rule of law. Because 27 years ago, to this date exactly, my brother, Zachary Mohammed, was shot at, and killed at point-blank range by his friend, Sani Gilbert, AD. A week later, the friend was arraigned on charges of culpable homicide. But because his father was a prominent politician in Kano at the time, the matter died. When the grief cleared, I took it upon myself to follow up on the matter, as there's no statute of limitations for murder. I went back to the court in Sulejah to check the, and the files had disappeared. There was not a record of this heinous crime. Thus it was like, poof, my brother's life was erased by this boy 
and no one was made to account for it. So you wonder, why should it matter to the rest of you? We, his family, have grieved and it should be over, but it is not. 27 years later, nothing has changed. This is a reality for many people in Nigeria. I've written articles extensively on this, about the rights of victims of crime in Nigeria. Some are prominent and you would recognize them. Remember Dele Giwa, Bola Ike. He was Minister of Justice and the Attorney General of the Federation. The shock killed his wife, Justice Atunike Ige, and left his children orphans. MKO and Kudura Tapiola, Funsha William, Alfred Rewani, Saada Turini, and the list goes on. Boko Haram abducts and rapes at will. And bandits in the Northwest throw babies into life limbs in front of their mother. On July 27, 2020, in Lagos, Chidima Ajoku was returning from work with a colleague, Chima Naike, when a 20-foot container fell on their bus and the driver ran away. She leaves behind a family for whom she was the principal breadwinner. Her mother cried for justice and for those who were responsible to be prosecuted. But given the frequency with which these tankers crush people and no one is held accountable, it will not happen. Not so long ago, Hajara Ismail reported that her son was tortured alongside his friend at the township police station in Bochi over allegations of stealing chickens that belonged to a retired police officer. She's quoted to have said, even if they were to take him to prison after being convicted, that would be okay. But it is sad and devastating for the hopes of your son to be bought after being tortured to death without you knowing exactly what he did. What did he do? He stole a few chickens that belonged to a policeman. Meanwhile, the officials of NDDC have been accused of misappropriating money, of which 6.2 billion naira was used for palliatives. Our children all over the world in on Niger Delta scholarships are suffering because their school fees remain unpaid by the same NDDC. Our criminal justice system is broken. Justice is selective. And our police who decide when they want to be judge and executioner are millions of corrupt politicians and their cronies. A philosopher, Tom Hobbs, says that for as long as we continue to live in what he calls a state of nature, without laws or anyone with the power to back them up, life and society become solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. Sounds too familiar. Wow. wow, thank you, Aisha. This very, is this very, is, this is, very, this is very familiar. Touching. This was um, a similar discussion I was having with um, a colleague yesterday. And um, fortunately, I also saw a senior advocate, you know, paint a picture of a, a, a similar scenario. And he said, you know, the police is your friend. Mm. Uh, that is when you have money to finance their operations as a complainant until the accused person is arrested and heaven bless you if the accused person is more influential or has, or has much money than you at that point you now becomes the accused person and then he stops taking your call and and, and it's sad that um, the essence of government is the security and welfare of the people and so i feel bad when the same government will tell me that yes you know we are here for you it happens they tell you, we are on top of it, go about your normal duties until the next happens. We don't really have value for human lives here. Yeah. And because we, the people, also are truly not ready to hold government accountable. Because it happens, we say, oh, we live on for God. Oh, may so rest in peace. Allah gives, Allah takes. And, you know, we go about our normal duty until it happens to us. Mm. And I think the solution to all of this is, look, we have to collectively come together and begin to demand justice. Not trooping to churches and mosques. The way we go to these places, if we all come out and mm -hmm. say, it has happened to one person, we demand justice before it happened to us, definitely there will be justice. But because we allow individuals to carry their own Cross. body, and we can never achieve it if you allow individuals to carry Absolutely. their own body. Until we come together to carry the body of you know, one, one another, another, we will not get there. And the, today is the police, they think, 
you know. But the same police, when it happens to them, they also want the yeah. people I mean, to carry their we, cross. We, we saw when um, there was an issue in, I think it was in uh, Borno or Medigree, when the police and the army, and the, yes. the suspect who was Yeah, the Wadume case. Yes. Oh, and yes. then the army, some mm. rogue soldiers, and the police went on social media asking Nigerians for help. Mm. <laughs> it was, it's amazing. Um, I, th I think um, Aisha's advocacy is, is very deeply personal and very yeah. important. But it, beyond the impunity, beyond the, the, the absence of punishment for people who, who commit these crimes, mm. uh, who break the law, there also should be punishment for government officials mm. who fail in their responsibility to, to do what is right, to govern properly, to provide security and, and, and welfare mm. for the people. Um, however, I, I, you know, it, it appears as if the, you know, and you've talked on, uh, about this, we, we, yeah, uh, yeah. the big man syndrome, mm. yeah. um, where because he is now a big man, um, the rule of law tends to bend yeah. um, 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 for them, or, or at least bows to them. Mm. I think that more people, social media is helping. But I think that we've, as we've seen, social media can also be weaponized, can yeah. be paid for, yeah. can be bought and paid for. Yeah. So it, it is about really the integrity. Um, the de we must have a defender of the integrity of the rule of law. I don't know how that will be. Who would that be? No, it has to be <laughs> all us. Of us. It has Collective. to be us. I mean, that be all the, of us. The, the bottom line, I mean, I was listening to all that and I just thought we live in a system. Can happen to anybody. That, that yeah, forces, absolutely. that actually makes people do corrupt things, you know? Like, I looked at, uh, actually, it's Liboris, I came across your post the other day, um, which is, a, you showed a picture of how the police, police live station, yes. in the police barracks, and, and then we're expecting them to treat us like we're human beings and, you know, that we're not people to extort money from. Um, if people are living in that kind of condition, you know, we can only expect a certain kind of treatment from them. I remember when I got robbed, and I took it to the police station. I even got some people who collected the guy because the police wouldn't even, couldn't even get the guy for me. I got somebody who was able to round the guy up, bring him, yes, <laughs> bring him to the police station, everything. Boy, they promised me that, don't worry, madam, everything will be done. I didn't know, I was fresh from, I don't know what. They started, and then that, that's Money, when the extortion yes, started. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they today. extorted from me, extorted from him. Yeah, like this. In the end, like the guy actually called me and said, madam, please, take this matter off the police hand because I would even rather pay you directly. You know, they're collecting. <laughs> and that's how I knew that we are never oh, going to no. get justice in this oh, system. It's about who is the highest bidder, who has more money. And that's why, unfortunately, that's the, you know, the, the case that's happening today. It's, it's very it's frustrating. A, it's, it's, it's a systemic problem, actually. Mm. Yeah? And it cuts across from the police to the justice system. Yeah. Everybody is involved. And, and for us as the people, I think we abdicated our responsibilities. Mm -hmm. There is this mentality that outsources our own responsibility to God. And yeah, we'll say, yeah, that's uh, okay, we'll leave it. Leave God. it for God. Meanwhile, those but kind when of... it comes to God, we, we, if God is, we want to fight for we God. We want to fight for God. For our own rights, we, we, we leave we, it. We, 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 like we, we don't feel connected to one another. I don't know what they have done to us for however well, long. Well, I don't know if they, we well, still we suffer together. No, we don't feel connected. Way. Like, if something happens to you, I'm thinking, well, that's Balahan's problem. It will solve his you own. Know, exactly. He, that's his business, you know, you which know, when, is not when, the case. When Aisha was, you know, taking advocacy, the picture I kept seeing was my children. Mm. If this happens, if what this will is done in the I board, feel? it can happen to anybody. anybody. Okay. That's why we need to come together. Absolutely. And it can happen to anybody. And I thank, don't know what thank, we're afraid of. Thank you, guys. Um, well, this, um, thank you, Aisha, for this. <laughs> um, sober time calls for sober reflection. And I'll be continuing in that mode um, after the break. So join us after the break. Welcome back, guys. When we neglect the important, there may well be a marked absence of whalers on the day of the funeral. So my advocacy this week is on the importance of politics and why we should all take it very seriously. As David Hunain wrote, and as is made evident every day in our lives, from how much we pay in taxes, our failing security, the lack of jobs, um, education jam, elections have far-reaching consequences for us all. Um, and to paraphrase the late famous Jamaican reggae artist, Peter Tosh, you may not be a politician, but you will, be indeed, you will indeed suffer the consequences of politics. And let me illustrate this by a tweet by um, someone on Twitter, Nafizi. 
And we talked about how um, the president of Cote d'Ivoire wants it's a third term now and against the constitution of his country. And so this, is, this clearly happens because African leaders know they can take a chance on a mile because most of us, most of us as average African citizens, we're not in, interested in politics. Instead, we exist just to survive. And this is without knowing that there's a daily consequence for this. And our concentration is just to survive without knowing that our survival depends on politics. So the average person only considers himself useful only during election times, when it's time to vote. But I've had plenty of arguments also as well about Niger from Nigerians, especially about those of us in the middle class. We always often say, um, you know, politics is, is not for us, um, is a very dangerous game. And, and I belong to this group as well. I, I myself, I'm, I'm part of it. And, and I, you know, as, as Bolan said, I abdicate my own political responsibility. Um, but I can tell you, I can accur accurately track the level of de development that we, we have, or the crisis of governance with our disinterest with, with, with politics. And this is prevalent, not just in Nigeria, but across the land, across the rest of Africa, that is. We hear stories of how bad politicians are, how frightening the landscape is, how perhaps if you get into politics, you're bound to lose your life or your money. Well, the truth is that we are losing our lives daily. Gradually, we're losing our nation. We're losing our nation, we've lost it, really, some would say, to the rogues who continue to feast on the carcass of our commonwealth, whilst we hide and pray. If we want a better country, a better state, a better local government, a better community, we have to go into the trenches as well and fight for what we want. Yes, indeed, politics may be dirty and often dangerous in this time, but as my people will say, the Igbo people, we have this saying that, what it means is that we cannot, because people die in wars, become cowards and flee from a responsibility to protect our people and to save our own lives. It is time we fought this war to save our country and ourselves. There will be casualties. That's the reality. There will be loss of reputations, savings, health, limbs, or even lives. But there's no other way to save Nigeria than for all well-meaning people from across this land to get into the political arena. Our own very lives and those of our children depend on the fight we undertake today. The Americas, the Europe we often run to, waged, and are still waging their own wars to win a better society for themselves. It was not a gift from a God from above. And no matter how hard we pray, we must get off our callous knees and our hands and use our hands and our hearts and minds and go, get into the rings as well. It is because of our silence and our apathy that leaders like those in Ivory Coast, Zimbabwe, and elsewhere will have the courage to think of illegally extending their tenure. And because they have no fears of repercussions for their misrule because we're not interested. So Nafizi in his streak talked about this refusal of leaders in Africa to leave power as a feature of what he called the African disease, which must be studied. For me, it is not any African disease. Rather, the disease is the mass apathy and disinterest by the average middle class, meaning that the poor will always be used as cannon fodder. But we, the middle class, well, I'm lucky to count myself in that group, we must rise up. For according to my Michel Montaigne, he who fears he will suffer already suffers because he fears. No one will save us but ourselves. Absolutely, I agree with you. And um, I think it's about time that we realize that this, you know, I was saying to Bolaho earlier that I think we kind of imagine that World War III will be like a weapons type of war yeah. and stuff like that. We don't actually realize that this war is against the people. And if we don't see that, then we'll not understand what's actually happening here. There is a war being waged against the, the public, the people. And until we wake up and realize that we're all going to suffer from this war. Um, it, it's not just the poor people suffering now, is it? You know, the yeah. middle class are losing their jobs. People don't have any livelihood because of COVID and whatnot. Um, and the government isn't really doing anything to help people, to buffer us, where the palliatives, where is everything? Nothing, you know? So I think we need to now realize that we're pretty much 
on our own. And the only strength we have is in numbers. We need to come together. together. We need to speak up in whatever way we can. Before I, I, I don't know if uh, Maisha wants to quickly say something before yeah. I will uh, call out <laughs> our religious leaders. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Okay, um, you know, in truth, you know, this is one of... I remember many years ago when people used to say to us that um, we get the leadership that we deserve, you know. I used to get offended and say, but what do we do to deserve that kind of leadership? But in truth, you know, maybe there's an element of um, apathy on our hearts. And it's been going on for too long. And, you know, we are wonderful armchair critics and we complain a lot. And we do try. It's not as if we don't try. It's just that it comes in, you know, spurts. So, you know, we would uh, protest for a day, two days, a week, a month. And then, you know, we all get back. I know it's really difficult because we live in very challenging um, circumstances. Um, also, because most people don't know where their next meal is going to come from. Life is actually very, very uncertain. So it makes um, it makes it difficult for people to want to um, take too many risks. But the other side of it is that, um, you know, like America has said, we go to other parts of the world. If people had not stood their ground and fought for what they wanted, we wouldn't be able to um, go to those places just as you know as easily as, as we want to. That's why, for me, Aisha, it's that. We already know that it is not in their interest to willingly. Exactly. It is not yeah. served a la carte. Mm -hmm. you know? And so, they also do not know that the religious centers they run to are also fleecing them. Because when they the state... Know. They don't know. They don't, they don't know. Look, <laughs> well, let me tell you. They don't. They don't. <laughs> because when the states, when the states you know, is unable to provide the basic things, so what some charlatans did was to stop, you know, act as stop gap. All these things that the state ought to give you, don't worry, we will, God will provide them. All you need to do is to key into these promises of God by bringing the little that you have. And, and so, yeah. you now believe that these little things, job, uh, good roads, safety, that the government God. ought to give you, it's actually should from come God. from God. Mm. And, and so that's why you want to travel level. from Lagos to Benin. You cover the steering, you cover the wheel, you cover the vehicle with the blood of Jesus. Rather than calling on the security to protect you. And so, so you believe. Them and then their, secondly, their, their position. secondly because of all of this, mm -hmm. you now become the states to your siblings. Mm. You are the local government. You provide your road. You provide everything. You leave the rest for God. Mm. Until we realize that both religion centers and the government are consistently fleecing us. And we know we say, instead of going to um, those, um, what do you call it, uh, Holy Ghost and Holy Fire Ministry, we sit down on the express and say, look, we will not move until government takes Until something happens. Until something happens. <laughs> That's the day that... We will we wake up and the, the, the country will move from this position to the position that it ought to be. Okay. Yeah. Or until we do I, that, forget I, I, I it. I think it's a, it's, a, it's a message in due season. Uh, this morning in the papers, you had uh, OBJ calling on the young people to take, take. back their country. Um, <laughs> I hope, I, the, the, source, the source is a problem um, because you might have the message is, the message is important. The message, the message yeah. is clear mm. and it's, it's, it's real. Uh, speaking to a guy, um, from one of the states mm. in the southeast, when we during the last elections, and we said, "Look, uh, yeah. nothing is going to happen." Blah 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 blah. I said, "How many registered voters are in your state?" He said, "A million plus." How many came out for that presidential election? Three hundred. Mm. So, how are we going to deliver on the change that if, we if desire? People don't participate. If people don't yeah. participate. On the election day, you're so, watching so, the match. Well, I'll ho hold your thoughts there. So, <laughs> so this is exactly the point that we're making. That is time we all, you all, threw your heart into the ring. Um, and back to colonization, Paul Kenney says, Liberos Oshoma, sometimes you are funny. Liberos, you're funny. Uh, but always straight to dig out the point. Um, and Sylvie, on that topic, Sylvie um, says, fact. Okay, Paul. Thanks you. Thank you, Paul, and thank you, Sylvie. Um, we've not, noted this 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 important uh, your contribution. On the complete edition, one viewer, Benson for the ladies, mm, interesting guy, gives a thorough appraisal. And he let me let me quote him here. He says, "This is my first time I've seen your show. 
I'm impressed with the quality of the panelists and the depth and grip they have on the subjects. More especially, the independence of the opinions of the panelists is worth remarking on and celebrating. My brief stint in politics exposed me to the fact that programs such as yours are normally for the highest bidder, where questions are either asked or tamed, depending on what has been sent in, in a, day before the, a day before by the government or, or I don't know. Um, because of this, I have been on local TV strike. He's, uh, Benson is saying that because of this, he's been on local TV strike for almost two years now. And he continues, it was refreshing to watch such an independent and yet to be entangled program today. The freshness in the opinions and the fresh perspectives give one hope that things can be done differently in this country, despite the allure and pressure from politicians. This program is about the purest there is out there now. No frills and very freshly cut topics, a departure from the highly commercialized and entangled ones out there. However, a lot can be improved upon. I hope our producer is listening. However, a lot can be improved upon too. While the program is focused mainly on politics, nuanced programming, that intentionally targets the attention of our teaming youth should be introduced. Their viewership should be pursued and solicited with age-appropriate discussions and panelists too. Um, I, think I'm, I think I can count for a young person. You know. for real. Yeah, for real. Look at my sneakers. The youth, <laughs> the youth need to be targeted deliberately. They seem disenchanted from politics, but can be sucked into watching and participating in the appropriate segmentation of your topics and, and guests. The charge by Aisha for people to get engaged in advocacy will have been best suited by the youth that are almost lethargic and redundant. On the whole, I rate the program on its authenticity and unbiased approach to issues 80%. That is brilliant and, and that is wonderful. Thank you very much, Benson. Um, uh, so Benson, I, I, you know, I thank you for your feedback. It's music to our ears um, and uh, keep it locked, as they say, and uh, as we continue to advocate with us, and continue to advocate with us rather, on our social media platforms on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, um, the Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, um, hashtag the Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com, The Advocate. Um, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. So over to you, uh, Gwalaon. Emeka says there are sober times. So why all the drama? Uh, I may seem to be providing some light relief after the break. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you. It could be argued that laughter is only medicinal when the underlying ailment has been dealt with. Other than that, it is merely a hallucinogen deceiving the senses, theater of the absurd. It was in the wake of senseless killings in the Taraba Benue Axis in early 2018. Blames were flying everywhere, accusations and counter-accusations, all eating up the polity. And suddenly the news broke that a snake had swallowed 36 million at the Jambo Fist. The headlines started buzzing with this magical tale by Moonlight. Comments, articles, interviews filled the social and other media. And for the following three weeks, the hottest news in the Nigerian media was the snake that swallowed money. As if the story was not dramatic enough, a senator was reported to have stormed the Jambo Fist with snake charmers. We were distracted from an important matter of state involving wanton killings of citizens, and we embraced the drama. If you ask me today how the snake swallowed money business ended, I don't know. Do you? How about the soap opera involving a senator who hid bribe money under his cap? 
Do you know how it ended? I don't. And I'll bet neither do most Nigerians. However, the drama was exciting while it lasted. But that was how far it went. Is it still a crime in Nigeria to receive bribe? That matter, as with many others, died a natural death, never to show up in the headlines again. Did you watch the video of the grave accusation by the former DG of SEC against the chairman of a NAS committee? The Honorable collected Esther code and first class ticket from an agency was meant to provide oversight for, to attend the foreign training. He did not attend the training nor refund the ticket or Esther code. He was on live TV, and the Honorable must have been stung by the revelation as he grabbed the nearest bottle of water and drained it. I guess to calm down. We enjoyed the drama, and it was on the front of pages of newspapers for some days. And that was it. What happened to the Honorable Member? Was he held to account? I don't know. Do you? Fast forward to the recent Off Your Mic series. The closing season was particularly hilarious, quite dramatic. Even a fainted man knew to pull out hands from his mouth in these days of COVID-19. I know you did not miss the icing on the cake as the minister treated us to an exciting afternoon of entertainment, which ended with the now popular Off Your Mic. After all the drama, so what? Will the thieves of the People's Commonwealth be held to account? Are we going to fundamentally restructure the legal and institutional framework for that agency? If history is anything to go by, the drama has calmed down, and that is where it all ends. Another drama will come and replace it. Did you hear that it is now possible for a bank to mistakenly transfer 500 million to an account in error, and neither the rightful or wrongful beneficiary nor the bank knew for years after? Ladies and gentlemen, get your tickets, buy your popcorn and drinks. The new season of EFCC series is about to start. We are swarmed in the drama of critical matters of state and not the substance. We lose focus on the, of the heart of the matter, and when the drama ends, the subject matters die with it. My advocacy is that as a people, the media, civil society organizations, opposition party, elder statesmen, you and I, we owe a duty to keep eyes on the ball and ensure that the failures of our institutions do not end up just as dramas, but create reform opportunities that are pursued to the logical conclusions, while we punish those acts that we do not wish to encourage as a society. Yeah, I heard the Maisha laughing. I think, um, I don't know if she wants to start. No, but I just want to add one more. You know, you forgot about the one during the subsidy removal, um, you know, with Lawan and Otedola. What happened to that? Yeah, that was the money in the cap. The money in the cap. Oh, that was the money in the cap. You didn't want to give us names. No, I didn't want to oh, give Oh, I'm sorry. Names. Okay, so now I've opened it all up. Yeah, no, I mean, this uh, uh, Aisha, is Aisha, Aisha, are you there? Do you, want, do you want to kick off this? Yes. <laughs> Go for it. Honestly, you know, um, when these things happen, and you don't know whether you want to laugh or you want to cry, that's the truth. And what you said about um, the popcorn, you know, really because you, we've become almost like uh, um, an audience, you know, uh, pretty much bystanders yeah. in our own lives. Yeah. These people are making decisions that affect us, that, um, you know, potentially will destroy our country. And um, every time there's an opportunity to make them accountable, you know, they start to faint, you know, um, all sorts of, you know, incredible things um, start to happen. It's really, really, really concerning. But I think that perhaps maybe what we need to do is put away the popcorn. I agree. We've been, you know, we've taken, we're sitting with the popcorn and we're looking. And then we need to then get back into the, 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 the circus with them. You're right, and you're right. what really is the most important thing that we, even if we don't take a decision about anything in this country, is for all of us that were formerly bystanders to insist on a policy of zero tolerance for corruption. Fantastic. That's what it's all about. That really is what it's all about, yes. Yeah, um, I, I want to also tie this advocacy to, you know, what Tameka has said. You know, it becomes a daily occurrence. Every day you hear, like a friend of mine, Ajima Ene said, you know, when um, that um, 
uh, NDDC scandal broke. He said, look, bros, this is uh, July season. By August now, another one will That's happen, and then, you know, we'll start I'm another telling. round of debate. And, no, and to solve all of this, America has said, you know what? Rise up, throw your heart in the ring. You need to be involved. The only way you can, you can take these decisions is if you are involved. You are not a human being until government says you are a human mm -hmm. being. You are not educated until government says you are educated. They take yeah. a certificate. You know? If government says you are dead, you are dead. Even if you are not dead. Even if you are not dead. <laughs> and so the only way you can, you know, change some of these decisions is to be involved. And they wouldn't want you to be involved. That's why they tell you, oh, this thing is dirty, is uh, bad, is, you know. But I want all of us, all of us cannot be possessed by the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, we will be shouting hallelujah. But we can be involved by ensuring that we vote the right people. We ensure, can be involved by ensuring that some of us, you know, we have to go into politics. We also can be, inv be involved by ensuring that also if any decision is taken that is not collectively favorable, we all come out and say, not necessarily fight. We just sit down and say, today, we know they go anywhere. We know mm. green. You know, all of those, these are ways you can be involved and then the society will be better. Mm. We should come out from our churches and mosques and begin to, you know, question decisions yeah. and not make excuses for government. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, like, I do feel like in, in this country, religion is like a drug that just dulls us down, dulls our senses down, takes away responsibility for where it's supposed to be placed. And so we're not, we're not doing anything. Everything is God will solve it, God will do this. Secondly, they have actually, they've done this quite cleverly. They keep creating all these dramas and they're wearing people like me and you down. So we've gotten to the point where we see a drama. I'm just, I remember the other day my mom was talking about, I can't even remember which one it was. Oh yes, it's the latest one about, um, Apparently, some governor or state governor is the leader of the, the book. book. Uh -huh. yeah. So my mom told me this. Of course, I just laughed. I said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who is the governor? Yeah, Are we ever going to find out who this governor is? Are we just, you know, they're just distracting us day in, day out. And people like me and you, we're tired. But we need to wake up. We need to realize that this is a tactic to basically keep us docile. And then we now need to all get involved. We need to understand this so, is a matter so, of life so and death. I agree. It's... it's it's ultimately important that we, we get engaged. But I, I just want to throw a little bit of a caveat around um, who is the we that's creating the drama. Okay. We are the ones. We like this kind of drama. We so the drama has been fed to yeah. us. I, I think that we need to yes. be, I, I just need to put that out there. Um, because the people who, are, the, the new cycle works in a way. This is the, we talked about this um, off, off camera and that we live in a digital clutter. Mm -hmm. Everything is everything. So what is most entertaining, most shocking, is what we all gravitate towards. Um, but I think beyond that, the, the media, the people who run the media, the um, unfortunate thing is that in Nigeria, people who run the media uh, oh, are connected thing. politically. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and so it is down to, as someone said, there is no PD. PDP is not the opposition party. No. The opposition party in Nigeria is social media. Yes. Mm. And, 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 and so that's why you see all the attempts by this government to yes. try and clamp down on, on social media, on social media yeah, because social media is the opposition. Yeah. It's, that, that's, and, and, and so we're left to that. But I, I think we need to get back to the point where um, we as a people need to continue this engagement. And, and, and my only True. way of looking at it is, is the enlightened self-interest of, of, of our NGOs. Yeah. They are the ones who actually will, will save us in, in, in this respect. But that's it for me. Yeah, thanks, Emeka. Um, in the spirit of all for one and one for all, and as we have just celebrated International Youth Week, I'll be saying, Liburos, yo. Yo, bola, bola, no, I'm saying, eh? That's how we roll. Let's roll now. Like we say in law, Nemo that could not have it, meaning you can't give what you don't have. So Nigeria hush youth are a reflection of our hush leadership. Hush youth, hush leaders. As we celebrate the International Youth Week, I'm tempted to follow in the usual criticism or cliche of our leaders that our youth are not ready for the future or leadership. As it is often said that they would rather watch Big Brother than create big opportunities. But I dare say, no nation intentionally neglects the training of our youth and expect responsible adults. And most of our rulers and public officials who steal what they want and what they will never need 
responsible adult to expect responsibility from the younger ones, the answer you know is blowing in the wind, as it is a system of garbage in, garbage out. Our colonial leaders created good formative years for our then youths that subsequently made it possible for them to play active role in governance of Nigeria. Alhaji Shou Shagari, Alhaji Ibrahim Waziri, for instance, became federal ministers in their 20s. Matthew Mbu became an ambassador in his early 20s. Conor Yakubu Gowon became head of state at age of 31 and even got married as head of state. Buhari, who is still president in the year 2020, at the age of 77, became a governor of northeastern Nigeria in 1975 at 33 and subsequently president in 1983 at the age of 41. IBB became army chief and subsequent president at less than 50. General Lucia Gobasanjo became head of state and retired even before he was age 46, while his deputy, Musa Yaradwa, was in his 30s. The list is endless. Those were the generations that witnessed and benefited from the golden years of the 70s, but were given the opportunity of leadership. They made sure that the generations born in the 80s, 90s, and even now, knows only of a country that had never lived up to its potentials yet. Most often, when they even try to promote the youth, it is the not too intelligent ones that they select and would use to showcase the uselessness of the Nigerian youth, despite the abundance of exceptional youth like Bolahan, Emeka, and Co. Examples are some of the youthful Yeye governors. If you know, you know. If the Ziani and her court in PDP had not allegedly siphoned most of the monies meant for social infrastructure, and the education of youth, I bet she wouldn't have bothered today about Yahoo Yahoo becoming role models. If APC and our current crop of rulers had resisted the temptation of corrupt enrichment and remained true to their promises to us since 2015, our youth wouldn't be debating Hush Poppy or Big Brother currently. If IBB, Abacha, and their cohort, including some parading themselves to their sense, didn't spend our money buying properties abroad, our youth probably would have been creating and building big business brands today. I can go on and on. While I salute those youth who excel in various fields, including communication, entertainment, theater, sports, education, business, commun community building, mentorship, entrepreneurship, ETC, despite the hurdles and bottleneck intentionally created by our harsh leaders, I will not fail to mention that some are indeed very lazy and unworthy to be truly described as youth. I would therefore advocate that for the youth to achieve its potentials and favorably compete globally, the government must intentionally create opportunities, not just for formal education for them, but mentorship and reward system that will be gender, religious, tribe, and cultural discrimination free. Can I just quickly jump in then? Whilst um, because, it's, you know, your advocacy is spot on. I have a challenge, though, with the fact of asking government. Um, my, my relationship with government and the way government is currently structured is that government is extractive. Government is rentier. They are just, you know, I will actually say the less government we place in front of young people, the better the opportunities for young people. Um, I, and I say this because even you see, you see, like we're living in Lagos, the, to survive, new taxes, new this, yeah. new levies, new, new challenges every day. Um, so let's allow young people, and we see it, I mean, even in the aid of this COVID period where young people were just sitting bored and uh, the content they were creating was just was magnificent. Mm. Now, Lagos State and very soon other states will jump in. They want a new 5% levy on, mm, on, on this uh, and that. On, on, mm. on, 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 Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so the less government, the less government, uh, I feel you. the better I feel for, the better for. Mm. that. That's I, just what yeah, I, I, I like no, to say. I agree. I, I, totally, I agree with you and I agree with Laboris because that was the same thing. That was the same problem I had because it's the same government that wants to keep the youths dumbed down anyway. So I don't True. really see that that same government would be so willing to now be offering them the opportunities. But at the same time, I think Laboris did answer it to a degree where he said, they need to get up from their chair and they actually need to, you know, force the government to at least give them something, you know, that they can work with. Because I feel like 
what, what, what do they even have to work with now? Education is almost next to nothing. I mean, have you heard the youths lately? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so that is my concern. They don't really have the tools, and the only people that they have as role models are the hush puppies and, oh and, and the politicians. Yeah. You well, know? There, there, there are people who are also doing so. There are some people doing so. No, they are, but, but there. that's not what they're seeing. <laughs> yeah. They want but, to yeah, make I money know. fast. The easy money is, is what is uh, of more interest mm. to them. I'm, I'm more worried about the fact that. Um, yeah. a young, we have a young population right now, can, and we're not making can the... You, can you hold your thought for a second? Okay. I, I, I like Aisha. Aisha, are you there with us? Can you jump in quickly? Yeah, yes, yeah. I'm here. Because I, I, I can hear your thoughts. Uh, <laughs> 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 you can. Then, then you can. Now you, so can well. you, can you know, hear in right. truth, okay. it's... Um, so, again, it's always about finding a balance. You know, and we need to find a ba find balance. I agree with the fact that yes, you know, we need to perhaps to get government out of the way and try as much as we can to get um, to get the youth to become independent. And I also like the argument about um, if you don't take power, nobody is going to give it to you. But unfortunately, whilst we're waiting for all of these things to happen, is that we're losing a whole generation. We're losing them to drugs. We're losing them to crime. We're losing them to terrorism. So I'm not sure that we have a lot of time. And for me, that's what is really frightening about it. But do we really, I mean, what is the answer? I think that part of it is that when you, when you look at even the opportunity that we lose with education, you know, our children go through school and they really come out of it. At the end of the day, you wonder what do they teach them? Mm -hmm. All of the values that they should have inculcated in those young years are not being inculcated. Yes, I lots of arguments. People say, yes, it's a parent's responsibility. But I think all over the world, the concept of school is that you put through children, even those that would, were likely to fall through the cracks, through a process and a system. And at the end of it, you hope that they will become useful um, citizens. But I suppose the final point is what was said to the youth. They need to get up. Because nobody ever gives power willingly, mm -hmm. right? In truth, it needs to be taken. I know that sounds a bit revolutionary, so I think I'll stop there. But, you know, that's just the way I feel. Yeah. And, it, you know, just sort of on a little aside is the argument about um, um, youth, you know, the ones that are given the opportunities to represent the other ones are the ones who give. A lot of that also happens, you find, when they give quotas to some women, and you wonder, why are these the ones they, they, they are picking? So at the end of the day, you know, it's all of us, again, that just have to really stand up against this. Because in truth, how do we... In fact, there was a time I used to feel as if, sorry, very quickly, as if, like, we used to treat our youth as if they were endangered species. Didn't you notice the way they talk about them was like, the youth? And you're wondering, they're part of this whole collective, you know, almost as if there's some group of, I don't know, aliens yeah. that just dropped us. We are a huge population of very young people. What are we doing? We have, we have all the young people. Yeah. You know, and, and my, 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 my worry is that the same way they are huge now, and we're not deploying them, we're not harnessing, harvesting, and deploying the energy of the youth, it's the same way they will get old and mass, mm -hmm. and is a huge body. Yeah. If we have not, you know, do the appropriate thing when they were young. Mm. Yeah. Ask, ask about the baby boomers and the impact in those economies when those baby boomers are now becoming old. Mm. It's, a, it's a huge burden on the society. That is why today, when they are still young, we must take, make the best of them. So ends another power-packed edition of The Advocates. Continue to advocate with us on our social media platform on Facebook, plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, and on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. And to catch up with previous broadcasts, simply go to plustv.com forward slash The Advocates. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. See you same time next week, same channel. But till then, let's keep advocating for a better society and then leave out the yo. Yeah. Bye, guys. Thank you. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely.
and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.